It is recognized for 60 minutes as the designee of the majority leader. Thank you. It's a somber time to come into this chamber as we have colleagues at the other end of the building who formed something they call the Common Sense Coalition, which is, I think, a gentle euphemism like so many things in this town are, which might well be called the kick the can down the road coalition, the doing the same thing again and again and again and again and expecting a different result coalition, or the those who do, do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it coalition. The photo that's to my left, your right if you're viewing at home is of me at a ceremony at Red Hill Farm in the 5th District of Virginia where a man named Patrick Henry lived. Patrick Henry is notable as an early patriot who sought to ensure the blessings of self-determination and liberty for a fledgling nation that determined that it was unjust that they should be governed by edict from across a sea, and most notably said the words, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Indeed, anyone who signed the Declaration of Independence understood at that time that they were literally signing their own death warrant, and yet they did because it was the right thing to do. And today, we've generated into a political class that knows pandering, and efforts to placate individuals without the interest of the mass constituency that we all unitedly serve, and that is the American people. In fact, when Patrick Henry spoke about liberty, one day in a separate speech from the back of the room, someone shouted, treason! And Henry responded eloquently, if this be treason, make the most of it. What has happened to our leaders? And so that day, I spoke to a group of a couple of dozen new Americans from every corner of the world, from Asia and Africa, the Middle East and Europe, South America, who had in some instances worked decades to become Americans, to earn those blessings of liberty gained for us by people like Patrick Henry, like a million nameless faces who died of combat, death, disease, or starvation during a war to end the horrific institution of slavery like Abraham Lincoln, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So they indeed look like America, brown people, white people, black people, Asian people, American people, and they earned it. But what's coming out of the Senate now essentially throws aside the sacrifices of so many in order to score political points. It was indeed one of the greatest honors of my life to welcome those new brothers and sisters to our American family. And yet the process through which they pained and labored does not in any way mirror the process that we would continue by kicking the can down the road under the proposed Senate quote unquote compromise. I could really literally do this all day and all week and all month and all year. if I wanted to highlight the cases of individuals who had lost their lives because our federal government is completely unwilling to enforce the laws that it currently has on the books. Many of you recognize the lovely face of Kate Steinle, who was enjoying a beautiful afternoon in the Embarcadero District of San Francisco on Pier 14 with her dad, a graduate of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. She worked field and recently moved in with her boyfriend. When an illegal 
who had been deported five times, who the local government refused to turn over to federal authorities, discharged a weapon which he stole from a member of law enforcement, and what he said was a sea lion, which is bad enough, and killed this lovely young woman who her friends say loved yoga and helping others. Reports indicate that among her last words was a plea to her father to please help. And she passed away because we refuse to enforce our law. Edwin Jackson, linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts, born in the same town that I was, Atlanta, Georgia. He didn't have big time football offers out of high school. Indeed, instead of the University of Georgia or Florida or Clemson, he matriculated to Georgia Southern University, but he worked and he worked with an optimism that radiated from the very smile on his face. And not long ago, Edwin Jackson became one of nearly 1,000 people per year who die in alcohol-related accidents involving people in this country illegally, as well as his Uber driver, Jeffrey Monroe, who should also be noted. Edwin Jackson's obituary indicated that his greatest goal in life was to be a positive role model for young people to overcome challenges. The individual who was detained had a blood alcohol content of 0.239, or nearly three times the legal limit. He had been deported twice before, tried to run from the scene, and lied to police officers about his name upon his apprehension. And Edwin Jackson and Jeffrey Monroe are dead because we refuse to enforce our laws. Denise Mosier in my home state of Virginia in 2010, was riding in a van with two other nuns from the 33-woman monastery where she made her home, aspiring to help people. Her two dear friends were horrifically injured in an accident that took Miss Mosier's life. This Benedictine nun had devoted her life to the service of others. And quite literally, you could find nothing bad that anyone could say about this woman. The driver who took her life was ultimately charged with DUI third or subsequent offense. He had arrived illegally in this country and was only weeks away from a deportation hearing, which he was only having because of his multiple prior arrests for driving under the influence. Tragically, our unwillingness to enforce our own laws cost about 10 percent of the community at the monastery where Denise Mosier made her home dearly and cost about 4 percent their life. Here of 1.5 million. And the death toll of drunk driving and related offenses in this country is about 10,000 per year. So extrapolating those numbers, nearly 1,000 people per year are killed in alcohol-related accidents involving those here illegally. And we refuse to enforce our own laws. Peter Hacking was a volunteer fire department captain in Texas. One afternoon not long ago, Peter stopped off Highway 78 to pick up his children, which included four-year-old Ellie and a son who was two when they were killed by a previously deported drunk driver who ultimately received a sentence of about two years, who was here because we will not secure our border and we will not enforce our laws. Let me be clear. Those two dozen or so individuals who I had the great honor of all faiths and all creeds from around the world of welcoming into our American family 
are American just like everyone watching this today. But those who are not here legally, who will not go through the processes prescribed by this very body, are a discredit to those who work so hard and those who have sacrificed so much to make this nation the beacon of freedom that it is. And no nation of laws can perpetuate itself so long as it looks the other way as its laws are selectively enforced and not enforced. Tessa Trankert, Virginia Beach, Virginia, riding with the girlfriend, killed by a drunk driver here illegally. Danny Oliver, Michael Davis, next. Next, please, sorry. Law enforcement professionals from Sacra Sacramento, California, murdered by a frequently deported individual who swears that he will find a way to kill more police officers. Dominique Durden, killed while riding his motorcycle by an illegal drunk driver. Jamil Shaw, brutally shot and murdered by an illegal. Marilyn Ferris, who devoted her life to the service of this nation in the United States Air Force, beaten, tortured, raped, and murdered by an illegal who had been arrested six times in 15 months, the most recent time, eight days before this crime was perpetrated, but not reported to federal authorities because the sanctuary community that she was in did not deem it worthy to report. I want to see a healthy and robust immigration system into this country legally, and I want to live in a nation that enforces the very laws that these bodies pass to protect those people who we are tasked with serving the American people, be they naturalized or native born. I literally could keep telling these stories for weeks and weeks and weeks. So we now find fiscal responsibility, a rallying cry from individuals who don't seem to care about that at any point in time, except for when it's convenient to their political agenda. And we have a president in the White House who suggested that we would build a border wall and we would have those who were responsible for the immigration problem pay for it. And a media that glowingly and gleefully pokes fun and says, how's that plan going for you? Well, I have a proposal. About 92% of foreign nationals in U.S. federal prisons are here illegally. That's over 9 out of 10. That comes out to about 34,500 inmates in our federal prison system here illegally. And they're not here for immigration violations. They're here for robbery. They're here for rape. They're here for murder. The cost to incarcerate one individual in the federal prison system annually is about $32,500. I'm not that good at math, but that comes out to about $1.1 billion per year. If you move away from the federal prison system and extrapolate those numbers across the state prison systems, you're looking at something like nine and a half billion dollars per year to incarcerate illegals here convicted of violent crimes, felonies. We're talking about prisons, not jails. Now, the Senate plan says, OK, well, what we're going to do is we're going to spend 18 billion dollars over 10 years. I'll tell you what, if we can just secure the southern border and stop the inflow of illegals, we could reduce our federal and state prison expenditures by about $9.5 billion a year, and I'll get you your $18 billion in two years. In other words, you want to pay for this wall? Build it. It'll pay for itself. And that's in dollars and cents. But, folks, how do you quantify the lives of these people? How do you put a dollar value on the life of a woman who spent her entire life serving our country and was tortured, raped, and murdered? by someone who had been arrested just six days before and under the federal law should have been reported to federal authorities, but they didn't think it was necessary in California. Or Jamil, how do you quantify these lives? Is there a dollar value you can put on this young man's life? How about these law enforcement professionals? How about this teenage girl from Virginia Beach, Virginia? 
How about a firefighter and father of a 22-month-old, four-year-old? How about a nun who devoted her entire life to serving others? How about a football player who worked his way up from the bottom and only wanted to motivate and inspire young people who face challenging circumstances? I genuinely love my brothers and sisters of all races, creeds, and origins. I genuinely do. And I welcome them to apply to a process to allow them to avail themselves of the benefits of, I believe, the greatest nation the earth has ever seen. Winston Churchill said democracy was the worst form of government except for all the others. This is the worst country in the world except for all the others. But if we won't enforce the laws that we pass, who are we? What have we become? And if we won't protect those people, firefighters and police officers, nuns, and mothers who protect us, how can we look at ourselves? I would yield at this time.